Okay, uh, welcome again to everyone, uh, to those who haven't uh, participated in uh, Mike's uh, sessions. Um, this is uh, Mike Weber. Um, he's the lead trainer at SpiderTools.com, uh, which provides uh, Linux training, including uh, Nagios Basic and Advanced Training. And uh, Mike will be talking about Matt Gehrman. Thank you. I know a couple of you got uh, or played with Mod Gehrman. I've heard, I've talked to a couple of you that are playing with Mod Gehrman. Uh, most of you may have not. Um, any of you using DNX currently? Okay. One thing I'd say off the top is if you're considering Mod Gehrman or DNX, one of the decisions that could be an important aspect is if you're using Nagios XI, DNX is officially supported. So probably you want to go that direction. Uh, just make your life easier. Not to say that Mod Gearman doesn't work with Nagios XI, but if they support it, then it's something you may want to take a look at. So I'm going to give you some, some basics uh, with Mod Gearman. And I think when you s initially play with it, as I was telling a couple people, one of the most disturbing things is it's just too easy to set up. You set it up and you wonder, did I really do this right? Because uh, I've not experienced all the agonies that I've had with other things. And so that's the good news. And uh, it's not that difficult to work with, so that's one good thing. So I want to talk about a couple things with Mod Gearman. Basic functionality. Uh, there are some aspects of the functionality that I don't have an example of. Um, and so some of those things I can't show you, but they're, they're, we're going to look at some of the, the basic functionality. The documentation on the site is not fabulous, but as you work with it, uh, you'll find that part of that is that you're assuming that you can figure this, some of these aspects out on your own. Uh, and then you may do some searches and find some ways to uh, do some things that will help you. But there's not a whole lot of information out there on my gear. So that's one thing to know uh, there. So we're going to look at how it works. We're going to look at self-load balancing. This really doesn't make sense when you talk about it. And what I'm talking about self-load balancing is you have a Nagios box and you load the server and the worker on the same box. Amazingly, it reduces the load. So it, it's kind of kind of counterproductive or counterintuitive is you think, well, why would I load the server and the worker on the Nagios box? And typically you wouldn't want to do this. But it may be a way to pull you out of a situation where you need a month before you can build another box or give you an option or something. So We'll look at that a little bit. Load balancing, uh, set up the server on your Nagios box and then put the workers all over the place and exchange that load out to those workers to cut the load on your Nagios server. And that process is pretty easy to do. One of the great things about my Gearman is you can, everybody has this, you got a piece of junk sitting in your your uh, office or somewhere, there's some piece of hardware that's just sitting there in a rack. You can't throw it away, it's just sitting there, it's not doing anything. You can throw Linux on it, put a worker on it, and all of a sudden, presto, you got something happening. You can use that old stuff to help alleviate the load off of your, your Linux box. Uh, of course, when you do this, those kinds of things, you know, you want to think about your proximity, you don't want to have uh, long distances between uh, Mod Gearman server and the worker. But uh, distributed monitoring, you can uh, select areas that you can monitor with uh, those different, uh, Mod Gearman can be monitored over on this network and sent to the Nagia server so it functions as distributed. And it can be used passively. So it has a lot of options, it does have a a multi-option as well. Some of you are familiar with um, Check Multi, uh, doing multiple things at one time, that option is there as well. So those are some of the things that we want to look at here. Okay, so the basic functionality is you can have multiple servers and multiple workers. 
And so it, it really depends upon your load issues. If, if, if you can uh, offload that to just one worker and it decreases your load enough, uh, it's easy enough to do and easy enough to maintain and it's uh, no big deal. But if you wanted to use five workers, you can just increase those workers as you need to. And um, setting these things up, uh, the config file is pretty basic and it's a pretty quick process. Supports multiple languages. Here's kind of the way that it works. You can see that Nagios executes a service check and then Mod Gearman intercepts that and it goes to a queue. And so in that queue, then the worker says, well, I'm available, so I'll pick that up, execute that, send it back to the check results queue, check result list, and on and on. So uh, it's a pretty standard way to set things up, pretty, pretty easy to uh, manage. Um, one thing that you want to make note of is your workers, and, and you want to kind of change your thinking here, is you don't need to set up, for your worker, you don't need to set up a Nagio server. You don't want that. But you do need all of the plugins and all of the scripts that you typically execute on the Nagio server. So this is one thing you want to think about is you're going to duplicate or at least have the <coughs> scripts and plugins that that worker will perform. Uh, that's, that is uh, one thing that you have to think about. Now, DNX has a way to automatically move that over and sync those two. And with Mod Gearman, for example, you set up a host group that is separate from, that's not being managed by Nagios, you may not want all of those plugins and all of those those scripts on your workers if they're not going to perform those tasks because they're in a specific host group that's doing something else. What I'm saying, and we'll talk about that in a minute, is you can tell Nagios to do these, this worker to do these, this worker to do these, and this worker to take whatever, whatever. So you have a lot of options to spread things out. He uses the Nagios event broker, and um, if you've used yet Nagios Core or XI, you're, you're pretty familiar with the concept of the event broker, which is a way for this application to pull out of Nagios. There's about uh, 30 different things that it can pull out of Nagios to use. We're talking about service checks, host checks, event handlers, etc. So all of those things can be pulled out of Nagios and used in an application like NDO Utils, DNX, Mod Gearman, MK Life Status, Merlin. Uh, those are all things that could be used to do similar type things. So that's the event broker. Uh, you just using the event broker, um, there's a lot of interesting things about event brokers that uh, if you get time, Digging into event brokers and some of the options there, especially as you begin to scale, becomes an important aspect of um, scalability. Okay, the advantages, well, you're trying to reduce the load on Nagios. The original reason I started looking at DNX or Mod Gearman was that I constantly run into people, and I've heard it here at the conference, and it's some, a lot of times it's not even your fault. The, the management says, hey, listen, let's get this going, you get it rolling, and all of a sudden, the box that you bought originally can't support where you're going down the road. So what do you do? I remember uh, one of the worst cases uh, I ever saw was in um, a, a county uh, situation in Florida, where this, the county office was managing all of this infrastructure for the county, and their box was totally maxed out. I mean, that thing was running uh, right on the edge every day. They didn't have uh, redundancy. They didn't have, uh, they didn't want to create another instance, another Nagios box. And yet, here they are pushing and, and people wanting to put more checks on. The thing, I'm sure, broken by now or else they found a solution. But when you get a box that's pushed to that max, you know it's going to break. You